Doctors say eating disorders don't care about your age, race, gender, or how much money you make. They can impact anyone. But getting treatment can be a difficult process. WDRB's Darby Bean investigates Kentucky's resources for help and why many are calling for more resources. She compares herself still to other people. It's scary. It's really scary. It's scary to watch them go through it. A lot of work needs to be done to know that eating disorders are very prevalent. You feel defeated. I think that's the best word I can use for our situation. Because it's not something that people generally talk about. But some are working to change that conversation. They are a life-threatening illness that can impact anyone at any age, any race, any ethnicity, any gender. For many patients, eating disorders can lead to hospitalization. And numbers show more people are seeking that level of care. Norton Children's Hospital says cases jumped from 37 in 2018 to 136 in 2022. Adult cases also rising during that time. I think eating disorders were on the rise anyways. Um, even pre-pandemic, the numbers were rising. Um, and I think the pandemic made the isolation tough for kids, for teens and for younger kids included. Um, I think that social media doesn't help things. Dr. Andrea um, Krause treats children and teenagers at Norton Children's Hospital. She also chairs the Kentucky Eating Disorder Council, pushing for more resources in the Commonwealth. It never feels good when you have to tell a family, I can't provide that care here for you or you can't get that care here locally. Doctors say eating disorders are complex, requiring multiple levels of care, but Kentucky has no residential program for these patients, meaning once they leave the hospital, they often travel out of state for treatment while battling the clock. There was a wait and we didn't have time to wait. I wanted to save my daughter. Some parents know the experience firsthand. Sending your child away is one of the worst things I've ever had to do. <laughs> 15 years old, Emerson spent more than a month in Arizona for residential treatment for anorexia. Nearly two years later, she's now receiving outpatient care in Southern Indiana. And for many families, insurance barely scratches the surface to help cover costs. You would invest in your child in any way so you could save them. I mean, we didn't even question it. Uh, we just said, we're going to figure it out. While Kentucky's resources have grown in the past five years, doctors and families say more help is needed. But you really feel defeated and you have to connect all the dots on your own. By not having a residential treatment facility for eating disorders in this state, that places our kids here in Kentucky at a disadvantage. The Louisville Center for Eating Disorders says it's the only partial hospital and intensive outpatient program in Kentucky serving hundreds of patients each week. We probably have to send patients out of state at least once a week to get residential or inpatient care. According to Dr. Krause, the situation becomes more dire in rural areas of the state with even less access to care. The National Eating Disorder Association says that's reflected across the U.S. Mostly we tend to see the residential treatment centers in highly populated areas. The association says that includes states like California and New York and closer to Kentucky, Illinois, Ohio and Tennessee have more treatment options, but it's difficult to track exactly how many with new sites opening. So why the gap of resources in the bluegrass? Doctors say there's a couple reasons. Whether you're looking at private insurance carriers or public assistance, the reimbursement rate is much poorer in the state of Kentucky than comparatively to other states that even are close to us. It takes a lot of specialty training to be able to treat eating disorders and to be able to develop programs. And so it can be really hard to get providers with that training to come and stay. The experts believe it'll take a combination of things over time to make a true change. So that's the frustrating thing is like, you know what they need and, and how to help them, yet you can't quite get there due to the finances. For now, they're focused on education, awareness, and prevention, with hope that more options become available in the years ahead. Reporting in Louisville with photojournalist Stuart Hammer, Darby Bean, WDRP News.
And if you or someone you know is struggling with an eating disorder, the National Eating Disorders Association has a screening tool online, as well as links and resources on where to find help. You can reach out through the numbers on your screen. The NIDA Crisis Text Line is available 24-7 for support.